Hi everyone, welcome to PCB Coffee Talk. I am Tara Dunn with Omni PCB. And I'm Liz Boradori with Omni PWB. During our sessions, Elizabeth and I focus on things related to printed circuit board design and manufacturing. Today we'll be chatting with Robin Hansen of McDermott Electronics Solutions. Final surface finish selection is certainly a big topic with implications for both the fabricators and the OEM. Our intention today is to provide a brief overview of the pros and cons of the most common surface finishes, including immersion tin, immersion silver, OSP, ENIG, ENIPIG, and Hassel, both lead and lead-free. Unfortunately, there's no one-size-fits-all surface finish that will work with any application. So when deciding which surface finish to select, a number of things should be taken into consideration. Things such as you need lead or lead-free assembly, um, cost, end environment, shelf life, volume and throughput, um, fine pitch components, RF applications, or high frequency, um, probability, thermal resistance, and shock and drop resistance. Robin, could you please run through the pros and cons associated with each of the surface finish options? Sure, Elizabeth. We'll start with hassle. The pros and cons for hassle involve so the advantages are there's a low cost chemistry. The product is reworkable. It has excellent solder wetting, and it has a long shelf life. The disadvantages with hassle includes line maintenance because the the line, uh, you have to work with a block of hot molten solder, which also contributes to board warpage, which is very aggressive to the panel. And due to the board warpage, it's not suited for fine pitch because the components do not lie flat. There's copper dissolution when you are make creating the solder joint, so you're removing some of the copper. And there's paste misprints at assembly due to the board warpage, and problems with lead-free due to the higher operating temperatures used to, for lead-free processes. There are wetting problems, the soldering irons may not get hot enough, and reduce plated through hole reliability. OSP the pros and cons include the advantages are it's a very easy process. It's short, automated, very the chemistry is very easy to analyze. It's very inexpensive, and the product again is reworkable. The disadvantages of OSP include once again line maintenance. With downtime, the, chem the chemistry is made provide crystals that collect on the rollers, which need to be removed before processing. The coating is very thin, and you can't readily see it, so it's difficult to inspect and handle. It's also very difficult to measure due to the thickness, the thinness of the coating. It's difficult to probe because it may collect on the probe tip, so it's difficult to electrical test, and there is no wire bonding associated with OSP. It has a very limited shelf life in assembly as the, the coating degrades with temperature, so the shelf life is limited with multiple reflows and poor solderability after the reflows. The immersion tin process, the advantages include it's a very easy process, once again, a very easy process to, to perform. It's well suited for pin insertion applications. It again is reworkable. It also has a low cost associated with it. It's very flat, so it has a fine. It can handle fine pitch components, and the solder and the tin dissolve quickly in the solder at assembly. So you have a good copper tin solder joint, which is preferred in the industry. The disadvantages include uh, it's very aggressive on the solder mask due to the components in the chemistry. The solderability quickly degrades with one heat exposure. You are prone to tin whiskering in the product, and due to the quick intermetallic, you have a reduced shelf life.
In Mars and Silver, the pros and cons are the advantages are it's a flat process, flat finish, so you can use fine pitch components. It again is low cost. It has excellent wetting capabilities. It has very good surface contact, so you can probe it. It has it's a high throughput process. It's very easy to process, and it has excellent solderability. It's not degraded by assembly conditions. The disadvantages include the handling requirements because silver is very easily scratched. You have to be very careful when you handle the panels and you have to use gloves. The migration concerns are um, for creep corrosion due to the quick intermetallic and tarnishing corrosion resistance. Um, silver is very easily tarnished and you have to be careful. It's very prone to sulfur and chloride conditions that will tarnish the and corrode the, the surface finish. And it's uh, limited w when using slider connectors. The pros and cons of ENIG include the advantages are it's co high corrosion resistance due to the nickel barrier. It has excellent solderability also due to the nickel barrier. Um, it has contact good contact resistance. You can aluminum, aluminum wire bond with this surface finish. And there's no degradation between the cycle reflow cycles, so it can be held mid-assembly for extended times. The disadvantages are it's a very long, tedious process. The chemistry needs to be analyzed constantly. And it's very difficult to analyze the chemistry. And you always have a potential for extraneous plating or plating in the non-plated through holes due to the activator. It's very expensive due to the cost of the gold. Uh, the high bath temperatures in the gold and the nickel leach the solder mask and substrate materials, which could affect the performance of the product. And it has uh, a signal loss, so it's not good for high pro for uh, RF materials processing. Guinea pig. The advantages of guinea pig is the added barrier of palladium allows a higher corrosion resistance and it helps mitigate black pad and you can also gold wire bond with less immersion gold than electrolytic gold with the same performance. It also has excellent solderability performance. The disadvantages are, once again, it's a very long process with many chemical baths to monitor and analyze. It has an additional step uh, when compared to the ENIG process. As an ENIG, there is also a potential for extraneous plating. And due to the, availability, the lack of availability, fabricators have not committed to the installation of this process because it is very expensive to run, and they don't want to accept the liability of a product that has little performance history. But we are seeing this grow in the market, and more and more fabricators are looking into the Inipig process. So Robin, if you were to break down the electronic industry by market sector, what would be the predominant surface finishes being used in each area? The surface finishes by sector include, for the data and telecommunication area industries, they typically use silver, OSP, and ENIG. In the automotive industry, it, uh, they typically use silver, OSP, or immersion tin. With high consumer end products, ENIG, silver, and OSP are the finishes of choice, whereas in the low end consumer products, Hassel and OSP are typically used due to their low cost. Aerospace, defense, and high-performance electronics typically use Hassel, Immersion Tin, ENIG, and INIPIG. And in the medical market, ENIG, INIPIG, and Silver are the common finishes. So in summary, there is no one surface finish that is suitable for all applications and environments in the, in the industry. 
So you still need to look at, is it a lead or a lead-free assembly? What is the cost? What is the volume and throughput? What end environments will the product, product need to survive? What are the shelf life? Do we need it to survive just months versus 15 years as in aerospace? Does, it, does the product need to contain fine pitch components? Or in RF applications, uh, does it need to carry a high frequency signal? Does it need to be uh, probable? Does it have thermal resistance? And is it shock and drop resistance, such as for the cell phones and tablets? Well, Robin, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. This has been a great discussion. Your contact information is being shown now on the screen. We hope that everyone enjoyed this session and that we were able to provide information that will help you with your printed circuit board designs. Remember, designing and purchasing printed circuit boards should not be difficult. We hope you can join us for our next PCB Coffee Talk in the near future. Thank you.